follow God's plan for your life. Yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You'll discover the joy of being obedient to His will. Next on The Believer's Voice of Victory, Kenneth Copeland and Kelly Copeland Swisher explore what surrender can bring. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you for your word today. We have ears to hear. We open our hearts and minds to receive revelation from heaven. And we give you, sir, all the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Kelly, let's go back over there to the book of Romans where we were yesterday and uh, in the 12th chapter there when, uh, when we ran out of time <laughs> yesterday. And, and pick it up there in what you were talking about. Let, let me tell you this. This is important. Forget about the past. Don't beat yourself or condemn yourself and knock yourself in the head over, well, I just wish I'd have done better with my children. Well, everybody wishes that. I mean, come on. Condemnation never changes anything. Um, you have the Spirit of God. You have the Word. You can be the parent you always wanted to be. You can be the husband you always wanted to be. You can be the wife you always wanted to be. Because I don't care how old you are. I don't care how you fouled up. The plan is bigger than the past. Amen. So just like Gloria said, get over it. And <laughs> boy, I tell you, hey, you know what? Uh, I was preaching to the troops uh, this last October. And I said, I kept telling them what Gloria said, well, get over it. And one of those guys said, oh, I get it. Get over it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I told Gloria about it, and, and she's she's even bigger now on get over it than she ever was. We heard a lot of that, didn't we? We did. Amen. So you, you're, well, yeah, well, just get over it. Praise God. Amen. And we, we, we always pray and believe God. That in all things, don't be anxious about anything, the Apostle Paul said, but in everything, in prayer and givings of thanks, let your wants be made known to God. Amen. Amen. You, it's there. It's in you. All right, now, here we go. Well, when you put it in us as children then, Dad, maybe we were practicing, as you talked about, us believing for a boat or a bicycle or a horse. You didn't tell the horse story. I think everybody's heard it. But when you were putting those, we were practicing. We're going to talk about that some tomorrow. We were practicing what you were teaching us. And so we grew up. You grow up by practice. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put the word in, you can you mature your children's spirits by the word. This is what the Bible says. You mature when the word goes in. I remember you were bleeding for something. I don't remember now what it was, but anyway, you were just just a little one and and I said, okay, you know how we do this, Kelly. And you sit there a minute and you said, uh, yeah, we sow seed. I said, that's right. And I said, now, do you, do you have in mind what you want to sow? Yeah. Was that the offering I brought to you in the metal Band-Aid box? I remember a metal, I don't make metal Band-Aid boxes anymore, I guess, but I remember bringing you money in a metal Band-Aid box. Seems like that might have been the time that you're talking about. No, the time I'm talking about, you went into your toy box, and you came out of there with a doll oh. that I stood in line <laughs> to get. <laughs> and and, I, and it, I stopped, and I thought, uh, my, my, first, do that. <laughs> my first reaction was, uh, Kelly, we need to have a little wisdom about this, baby. <laughs> and the Lord caught me up short, and the word of the Lord came. He just stopped me right where I was. He said, now she's doing what you practice and what you've taught her to do. That is a treasure to her. That's a prized possession that she has. And she's chosen for it to be her seed. You see me like as a cabbage dog. It's one of those little dogs that everybody was so big on there for a while. And I said, you know what you're going to do with it? Oh, yeah. You knew exactly 
uh, where you were going to give it. You knew what you were going to do with it. And um, we all oh, we prayed together, and and man, you couldn't wait to get that doll sewn into the life of the the little girl that that you were uh, sewing it into. And what I, Lord help me recall what she was bleeding for. Anyway, I mean it was just like this, and I learned from you about a significant seed. You didn't go in there and drag out the smallest or the oldest or the cheapest toy you had. You got the very best. And we prayed over it, and you gave it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here, the, the point that the Lord wanted me to make here is you stay open before your children because you'll learn. And you're teaching. They're learning. The thing that's important here, Daddy, is I was learning for my life then, and I didn't know it. You didn't even know it, really, I don't think. You know more about what you're doing now, but back then you're just trying to teach us what yeah, you do. Yeah, we're just going from day to day. But when I believed God for those things, and never once did God not fulfill what I was believing for. Never once did I she not receive. I, I she brought this up, so I might have to tell you about it. She came in there, and I was packing as usual. And fell, and I came in unpacking, and packed, and leave, and staying on the road as much as we did. And she said, uh, Daddy, I need to talk to you about something. And and uh, and, and I was in a hurry, and I didn't pay the kind of attention I should have. Well, I, I repented uh, about it to the Lord, and I went to her and apologized to her about it. And she she wanted permission from me to believe God for a horse. And so we prayed and and we agreed together and and of course she's got good she's a teenage girl by this time. And uh, <laughs> the meeting the meeting I was in, well, we were we had gone to California. We were in meeting out there, and after the service one day, this woman came up to me and said, Brother Kenneth. I need to ask your permission for something. I said, sure. She said, I have a horse, and every time I, I started to sell that horse, I've started to do different things with him, but she said that every time I do, the, it would come up on the inside of me, that horse belongs to Kelly. And I, I'm asking you for permission to, to give her this horse. Well, what am I going to say? No. I mean, <laughs> I've already agreed with her. And I thought, oh, Lord, what am I going to do with this horse? <laughs> I prayed and I agreed with her. Now, what I'm saying, you see, we're growing in, in this together. I'm having to expand because my children are believing God and, and their our faith is active as a household and we're growing by leaps and bounds. It was one miracle right after another in the first place. That's the biggest horse I ever laid in my eyes. A six race horse. Yeah. Six what was it, sixteen and a half hands high, something, seventeen hands, whatever it was. Just a monster of a horse. Beautiful thing. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with him. And another friend of mine in the horse business called me. I mean, he just, he'd never called me in his life. And he said, this is Sam Spence. And I, he said, I, the Lord had me call you. He said, have you, you got a horse or something? I said, Sam, thank you. My new best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get this horse from California to Fort Worth and what am I going to do with him when I get him here? I said, Kenny, you should have believed for a ranch or something. <laughs> and and he, had, he said, Kenny, just relax. Let me take care of it. See, God had it all worked out all the time. But the kingdom of God on the inside of me didn't care that I didn't need a racehorse. A Kentucky, from Kentucky Derby winner's lineage. You know, she just needs, she's just a kid. She just needs a horse. That's the way people and human reasoning things. The kingdom of God on the inside didn't care. The kingdom of God on the inside of me didn't care that I was 12 years old and wanted a Corvette. Somebody <laughs> called you and gave yeah. you a Corvette, and you said, I wasn't believing for a Corvette. I said, Daddy, that's my car. 
And so I know it was wrong when I was 13, and I got behind the wheel of it when y'all weren't home and took it around the block. Did y'all tell you that? No, uh, yeah, I have to. After <laughs> years, did, yeah. but I can barely get it home because I my foot wouldn't push the clutch all the way down. But that to me, I know that was wrong. But to me, that was my car, and the kingdom of God pull, on the inside of me pulled that car in. But my point in bringing this up, Daddy, is that when in the two times in my life, when my children, two of my children, Jenny and Lindsay, were at death's door. Yeah. I mean, there's no hope. Both Jenny cases, died. Yeah. Jenny both died. Both cases, both of them were not supposed to see daylight again. No, and Jenny died us. at the scene of a wreck, and, they, and the Lord brought her back. And um, there was not a thought. Talk about a core value. There was not a thought in my mind that they wouldn't, that he wouldn't do that for them. Why? My senses of God, my connection to God, my, my heart, my mind, the battlefield of our life is in our mind. Oh, sure. And the Spirit's got the power, but it's got to process through your mind to get out your mouth and to receive and to believe. Your believer is in your mind. And there was not a doubt in my mind that God... He gave me a bike, he gave me a boat, he gave me a racehorse, cars I didn't need. When I needed a car, it was right there paid for. Every car I've ever had. Why wouldn't he give me my daughter? Why wouldn't he give me my second daughter? The memorial of those things came up on the inside of me. And because the word was in there, I did what I was instructed at the time to do and say. And, of course, strong family standing with you. But I know in my heart, had it just been me standing there for uh, my children, God would do what he said he would do because I had so conformed my life and my will from an early age to his will that I knew. Because if you don't do what God says, you won't have, not that he wouldn't mind healing you or blessing your children or getting you out of tough, he, he always wants to. But if you won't do what he says, you have a hard time believing that he will do what he says. If you don't, if you don't obey him, then you open the door to fear. Mm -hmm. All doubt is fear-based and fear-dependent. And then you can't believe. And, no, I, I've had people say, you know, I, I just, Brother Coleman, I just... Seem like I, I just can't believe it. Well, the first step is the decision. I don't want to believe that. Yeah, and and you're 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 making that decision of quality, and you just won't retreat from it. Y'all said that before you even knew what you were believing. Yeah. You didn't know what was in there when you said it. Yeah. And and it when when you when you do that, then you close the door. Now you have grounds to fight that doubt and unbelief. But I learned later as I went, I can put a stop to that by putting a stop to the fear. I refuse to fear. Jesus said in dealing with death, they gave, just brought the, the, the notice to Jairus. The death messenger came and said, your little daughter's dead. Don't bother the rabbi any further. Jesus answered. That's so big there in the 8th chapter of the book of Luke. The death messenger came, but Jairus did not have to answer. He'd already spoken by faith. He didn't say anything. The scripture said when Jesus heard it, he answered and said, Stop the fear. Believe only. She will be made whole. And don't you want this in your kids because they're facing things. Dad, they're facing stuff like shootings and bullying I, it, it hurts my heart to think of kids number one kids who would be so hateful and so mean ungodly towards another child that make that child want to kill themselves or, or the other side hurts for me for kids who don't know who they are in Jesus that what some punk kid says about them can crush them yeah. when Psalm 119 yeah. says that um it's that word on the inside of us. But let me, I have to go there, Daddy.
because this is what we have to build in our children is this security in him psalm 119 i was going to try to just quote it a little bit but uh, we need to put our eyes on it there's a lot in psalm 119 oh, so, mama. such a power uh, it is and so in psalm 119 in verse 42 it says or verse 41, Lord, give me your unfailing love, the salvation that you promised me. Then I can answer those who taught me, for I trust in your word. Don't snatch your word of truth from me, for your regulations are my only hope. I will keep obeying your instructions forever and ever. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. I will speak to kings confidence in yeah, who they yeah, are yeah. how i delight in your commands how i love them i honor and love your commands i meditate on your decrees one more right here since we're here verse 143 I'm, i might talk a little faster here just to get it all in but as pressure and stress bear down on me i find joy in your commands your laws are always right help me to understand them so i may live this is what we instill in our kids this is what psalm this is what romans 12 says is what y'all did when you said we commit to this word to what we see in the word this is what we're going to do and he says when let me let god transform you into a new person by changing Line the way of thinking of your kids up with God's way of thinking. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. When you start operating, you said to us one time, I said, Daddy, talk to the kids. We were on vacation. You impacted my life so much with this that day. I said, talk to the kids um, about how do they know what God's will for them? How do they know what their destiny is and what to do? And I was ready for some big complicated in-depth pawpaw speech but you were so simple that day you said well walk in love and whatever he says today do it obey today obey tomorrow obey all week and at the end of the week you're going to be right where you belong do that for a month at the end of the month you're going to be right where you belong and in this scripture right here it says it's pleasing and perfect. It's, I don't believe that this scripture is talking about when you begin to operate in God's will for you, that it's good and pleasing and perfect to God. That's kind of, as they say, uh, on the nose. That's obvious that if God has a plan for you, it's going to please him if you do it. I believe what he's saying here is when you walk in God's will for you, you're going to find it's good. You're, it's oh, going to please you. It's yes. going to please your kids. It's going to be perfect. And this is what the entry is. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this word in my kid's heart. Let's, let's go. We have time, Daddy. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Um, and this right here is a really important chapter, I believe, for training your kids. Because the first... Verses. The first verse says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people and will love only themselves. And actually it goes on to list a lot of things mm -hmm. here. And really it describes this generation perfectly. Ungrateful, unloving, slanderous. I mean, that, there's a lot of stuff on the Internet. And I was saying that kids killing themselves because somebody bullied them or said ugly things on the internet about them. And a kid going back on the internet saying, well, I know so-and-so killed or something. I don't care. It's not even as nice as well, they say. Now, you remember. This is what's happening. Remember our family, I mean, we we relied heavily because we we pray this prayer for our partners every day in Isaiah 54, where, I, I mean, the 112th Psalm. We're not afraid of evil tidings because our heart is fixed trusting the Lord. Our hearts are established. And we go over that and over that. And if anybody said anything uh, like that about or to you kids, we'd sit down and talk about it. No, we're not afraid of that. We're not afraid of evil tidings. First place, don't read it, don't listen to it. In the next place, respond in, in the love of God and throw the care of it over on Him. But you have to be rooted... And actually, that Psalm 112 says your children will be successful everywhere. Yes, it does. In Isaiah 54, great shall be the peace of your children, and no weapon formed against them can prosper.
But oh. boy, this describes where we are today. And it says there will be difficult, doesn't, it says there will be difficult times for people are this way. The reason people have a difficult times is because they're, this whole list is a complete antithesis, antithesis, I can't say that right, to the Ten Commandments. Love God first, uh, you know, all those things that the Ten Commandments say, this is the exact opposite list. Yes, it is. And people will be blessed if they do things God's way, or people are going to have difficult times when they keep this list. Of course, you have to remember this list was made out here. He comes down to the sixth verse, having a form of God in this, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. He's talking about this taking root inside churches. Mm -hmm. And, and tomorrow, Dad, I want to pick up down here where he says, but you hold on to what you've been taught since then. Oh, yes. Praise <laughs> God. Yes, yes, yes. Kelly and I will be back in just a moment. I'm Aaron. I am a super kid. I'm a ninth grade Bible teacher and a sixth grade computer teacher. What I really like to do is, um, in my kids, I like to find out what they're, find their gifts. Because that's what I really felt like Super Kids helped me do, is, is, you know, find out, wow, with God, I really can do things. I really can speak to people. Because I never thought of myself as speaking in front of people, and having a message for them. But Super Kids, they challenge you, and they, they found it in you. They looked for, the commanders found it inside you, and found out your gifts, whether it be singing or doing the camera, I did camera for a while, doing sound, whatever it was. So you're, you're in the ministry early, getting involved early. We would travel sometimes to different, different cities, different states and minister and just, you know, do offering, uh, do a skit. And us kids were doing the skits up there. So other kids are seeing kids up there, their same age, living for God and, you know, doing messages for them. I think it really impacted the kids to see that. And then, you know what, uh, kids from other states would, would want to join in and want to get involved as well because they saw through us that, you know, we don't have to wait for adults, like you said. We can be kids and still really impact uh, our own age and people older than us, too. It really gave me um, a confidence because I knew who I was in Jesus, okay? So I really knew that Jesus loved me and he and He believed in me and he was, greater, he was in me was greater than what was in the world. So it really gave me a confidence of who I was in Him. When you know who you are in God, that just really impacts you as, as a whole. Like I said, that word confidence, it gives you a, a boost in confidence of who you are and what you can do. Because with God, like the Bible says, anything is possible. You can do anything through Him. And um, so I really, as a, as a kid, having that really helped me a lot. And I'm, I'm just so thankful that I was um, involved with them. Commander Kelly, we received an emergency transmission from a red zone. Then it onwards, home has been raided, and their HHR spot is gated. We must shut down the HHR before government intern taps into its file. Commander Kelly and the Super Kids are back in a brand new adventure. These unlikely heroes must band together to accomplish the mission and save Super Kid Academy. Through this fun and exciting, action-packed new movie adventure, your kids will learn how to supersize their faith and do extraordinary things through the power of God's Word. You guys are just kids. No, we are not. We're Super Kids. You'll also receive the Super Kid Academy Creed. I'm a Super Kid, serving a child. This Place Anywhere cling can go on mirrors, windows, lockers, notebooks, wherever they want to help them keep God's Word. Word deep in their hearts. I am a super kid. With this dynamic duo, your children can build a strong foundation of biblical core values that will last a lifetime. Build a strong foundation in your children's lives that will last a lifetime. Order the mission with the free Super Kid Creed Cling available now for 30 Australian dollars plus shipping. Order online or call 1-300-730-433. Train your children to be led by the Spirit in every situation they face. For this and more, go to kcm.org.au. For Asia, go to kcm.org.sg. Order your copy today. The new Super Kid movie, The Mission. This is a good movie. I watched it and I'm, I, I like it. It's good. Now, and, and along with the uh, Super Kid Creed. I had this idea come up just as I picked this up. Get online, kcm.org. If you don't already have them, order the, all of the Super Kid movies. Get your grandkids over and let them bring some friends and have a, a 
super kid movie watch or so you know and, and watch them all and yours truly was in some of them for, i was in this one too praise god it was just from here up but i was in there <laughs> yeah man we had so much fun with this and and do things like this that get involved in it you'll enjoy it, it it's a good thing to do because god will bless it the anointing comes and the next thing you know they're praying for one another and the next thing you know, good stuff is happening, and then they want to they want to do it again, and then they want to do it again. Amen. Amen. Now, another thing I want you to remember: the 24-hour KCM prayer line. This is very, very important. We have trained prayer people. These these are not, but we don't just you know. Uh, ship this stuff out somebody don't know what they're doing these people are trained they know how to believe god they stand with you in the name of jesus i'm telling you there's been times when people have called and, and that prayer person has prayed and walked them right through a dangerous surgery and that oh man it's amazing the things that have happened now if you live outside the united states check on the um the at our offices there on the times and so forth because some of them are not 24 hours. Get in it. Get, get engaged in it. And God will change things in your family. Hallelujah. We're going to see you again tomorrow. We're going to get in some things tomorrow that, well, you're going to be glad you came. Load the kids up around the TV. Yeah, right? amen. <laughs> Until then, this is Kenneth and Kelly reminding you again that Jesus is Lord. Keep the Word of God going into your heart and build your faith. Download today's Believer's Voice of Victory free on our website or purchase your copy on DVD or CD. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have something special for you. Beginning December 1st through Christmas Day, go to kcm.org slash 25 gifts and download a new faith-building gift every day. It's free, so be sure to share it with your family and friends. Merry Christmas from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Come to a Kenneth.